First thing I like to do is I put the probe down, cutting the abdomen transversely, the mother's abdomen transversely. And then I move the probe, I angle the probe to the maternal right. And then I angle it, to, then I do it to the maternal left. So you see how the screen is moving the wrong way. So I'm going to turn the probe around. And now I angle to the maternal right and to the maternal left. And now I know I'm holding the probe correctly. I don't, I don't bother to look at this P up here or anything on the probe. I just want to see how the baby's lying. So now we know this is the mother's right, mother's left. Now we need to figure out fetal left and right. So first we need to find out the spine is down here. So if the spine is there, I look to see if the head, the head is down here. So now we know the spine is here and the head is towards me and the feet are towards the, the back of the front of the room. So that means, now I figured out that the baby's head is down here. This is maternal rights. So this is going to be fetal left. Just by thinking how the baby is lying in the mother. That's the way I like to do it. So, so here's spine, posterior. Now we know that this is fetal left. Here's the stomach on the left and the heart's on the left. Before I zoom in, you can see the left, the axis is normal. It's about 45 degrees, not left axis deviation and not mesocardia, not dextrocardia. It looks perfect. And the heart size qualitatively looks normal. But you could do quantitative measurements of the heart size and shape and function, which I'll talk about later this afternoon. But just grossly, it looks normal in terms of size and, with, and the axis. And we know that the stomach is on the left and the heart's on the left. And we can also see the descent aorta to the left of the spine and the inferior vena cava up here, rightward and anterior. So that's visceral situs, but visceral situs goes along with atrial situs. So that's visceral atrial situs solitus or normal. Now we can zoom in and start to look at the heart. So what I'm going to do is talk about some of the techniques we talked about earlier. I'm going to narrow the sector so we don't waste all the resolution. I'm going to narrow it. Now I'm going to now I'm going to zoom up maybe, or the depth, make sure that the focal zone is where we want it, not up here, not down there, but just right. Now we could see it's not perfect because the placenta is anterior and we've got some appendage here, but that's where two hands helps. I have someone helping me so I can use two hands to push a little harder. I'm looking structure by structure, for instance. Right now I'm seeing a very important structure we talked about, this lower part of the atrial septum. I'm showing that that's intact. Sometimes you do things as you get them, see the baby's moving, so it may not be as easy now to see that as it just was a second ago. So now I'm still using two hands. I'm finding a different place on the maternal abdomen. But if you look with your eye, you could see the lower part of the atrial septum. So I'm going to walk back. Sometimes I start here. See, this is the lower part of the atrial septum. Always important to see that relatively perpendicular. It's not as perpendicular as I like, but good enough. So now the baby is not so perpendicular. If you look carefully, you'll see looks like a dropout here because this is not a good angle to look at the inlet septum. Not a good angle. Looks like a big VSD, but that's artifactual right here. In this position, we might as well look at the mitral valve. I hold the probe and I want to look very carefully at the mitral valve. It looks like it's opening up well. And then I'll look at the tricuspid valve. So you could see the tri mitral tricuspid valve up here. And then of course you could put, you should put color on here because it's a good angle. So I'm optimizing the color. So you see, you can see now that there's no tricuspid regurgitation. Here's the inflow up here. And you can see there's no regurgitation during systole. So the colors, if I had increased the gain too much, it looks like this. If I lower the gain too much, then you, you don't see much. So you have to put just the right amount of gain. The right amount of gain at one point in the exam may differ the next minute. And the other aspect is the scale up here. This usually you like to be very high up so you don't get artifactual TR. If you lower it too much, then it's hard to interpret. So it's a combination of working with the color gain and the scale to make sure you have enough sensitivity, but you're not bleeding into the septum. So now we're backing out a little bit. We looked at the mitral valve and tricuspid valve. What about a pulmonary vein? Let's say we want to look at the pulmonary vein. And I'm going in terms of structures rather than views. 
Again, as I meant, or mentioned earlier, it's not a single four chamber view. This would be a four chamber view, but you want to, of course, put color on. So this is very important to look at the inlet septum. You can see that the inlet septum, there's no dropout. The mitral valve is inserts up here, the tricuspid valve a little further towards the apex. And, but here we're relatively perpendicular, so here you could put on color to look for VSD. You put color on, if you lower the scale, it bleeds. It's too much, so you have to do it just right. But not too low that you miss. Same thing for the gain. If you put the gain too high, it bleeds in. You have to be careful not to miss, and I'm going to talk about this later, the the apex. Right now you can see the angle is not very good. I might be missing something at the apex. So I'm going back to two hands. You could see the lower part of the atrial septum. I hope everyone sees that. Now let's do a pulmonary vein. With the pulmonary vein you want to optimize the 2D picture first and make it so that, that when, when you put color on you know where you'll see it. Like here I know this should be a vein. It should be coming up and it should be what color should it be? It should be red coming into left atrium. So now let's see if we can get that. So now we know it should be coming right at the probe, red. There it is. So you could lower the scale a little bit. So that's a pulmonary vein coming in. Even if you do, I think one pulmonary vein is enough to rule out total anomalous pulmonary venous return. You could see the atrial septum within the left atrium. I mean the flap of the foramen within the, atrial, within the left atrium right here. So now what about the apple tracts? We haven't even looked at the apple tracts, but we've looked at the, the four-chamber view, the mitral tricuspid valves, the crux of the heart, the inlet septum, the muscular septum, um, the pulmonary vein, the flap of the frame and ovale, and we look for mitral and tricuspid valve regurgitation. And the look at the valves, you can see how they open. You can see how the mitral valve comes towards, towards the, away from the septum and opens up here, whereas the tricuspid valve comes straight towards the apex with attachments on the septum. So now we want to start to look at the outflow tract. And I'm using two hands because I need to push a little bit. The baby's not the easiest. So now it's just gradually going from the inlet to the outlet. It's this baby is, I'm pushing a little hard. You could see the aortic valve. Does everyone see that? So this is my favorite view, although it's, it's tough to see, but here's the, the septum. Here's the aorta, and we're going to look at the aortic valve, opening and closing. See? Opens and close. Open, and it disappears during cystic, and then it closes. It's tough because the baby's placenta is right here, and there's no fluid right where I want it. So that's the aortic valve. And see the aorta going all the way up. All the way up. And then the crossing... Here's the pulmonary valve and PA. So this is the sweep I was talking about earlier. We go, watch the aorta go up, come down into the three-vessel view, and then watch the PA come down and make the V. So the aorta going up and down. See how the V? So this is the one sweep that I think that is important to do from four-chamber, LVOT, RVOT, and then the the V. And you can see that the, um, the aorta comes down here to the left of the trachea. Ideally, we can also look sagittally, so you just turn a little bit to get sagittal imaging. There's the aortic arch. So here's the aorta with the head and neck vessels. And then if you go from fetal left, so well here's going from fetal left to right. So here's the short axis of ventricles, which is actually a nice place to color. But you can see I haven't optimized the image yet. So what, we do, what do we want to do? We want to narrow this. So we're doing all these adjustments, which are key. And now I'm holding with two hands. The first arch is the ductal arch, which you really want to see trifurcating. There's the aortic arch and there's the trachea. Trachea, and then as you go from the left, you go the aortic arch, ductal arch. So the ductal arch has 
the PA bifurcates or trifurcates RPA, LPA, ductus. Let's see if we can make that nicer. So you can see the ductus right here. The ductus. So the order is always should be ductus, LPA, RPA. Sometimes it's hard to open up all three like, like right now. This is the trifurcation. PA goes to RPA, then LPA, then ductus. See that? RPA and LPA, ductus, aortic arch, trachea. So this is going from the left to the right. Here's the left. We start off again with RPA, LPA, and then the ductus. And as we go towards the fetal right, we, then we get the aortic arch. And then we get the trachea here. So that's another way to show arch sidedness. And you can put color on as well. But you can see, look for ductal constriction with the color. So I like, after I'm done zooming in, I like to go back to 30,000 feet just to look at everything again really quickly. You can see the aorta, stomach, IVC. You can see the heart, apex to the left, 45 degrees. From above, you could see the, the lower part of the atrial septum, the flap of the foramen, the inlet septum, the aortic valve, pulmonary valve and how they cross. The pulmonary vein, again, you want to angle it and then you can repeat it and see the pulmonary vein coming in here. Outflow, crossing, and you could turn sagittally. There's the trifurcation. But you see the trifurcation. I like sagittal imaging in addition to the transverse imaging. It just complements it. So the bottom line, though, is uh, even after you, you finish going in, I like to zoom back out, make sure that I haven't missed the situs. I don't want to miss situs and versus totalis. I want to make sure I have the situs correct. I want to make sure all the ailments are there. And you could see the lower part of the atrial septum there. You could see the outflow septum, the uretic valve, pulmonary valve, the crossing. So this is a nice, normal heart. But I've been using two hands almost the entire time to get these. If I didn't, then it would be much harder to get, particularly with an anterior placenta, and the baby hasn't been in the best position. I like sepia, but that's just my style. But this looks beautiful, and we, I think we showed that there's no VSD. We showed there's no significant valvar regurg. Um, down here, I liked on the three-vessel view, I usually lower the scale to make sure I'm not seeing an uh, aberrant rights of clavian, which, as was mentioned, no, we need to go further. Yeah. Um, would, would be coming just about here, heading towards the right, behind the trachea. So I always like to look that I'm not seeing that lower in the scale all the way down. OK. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.